So let's look at how to use the built-in frequency function in Excel to create a frequency distribution of some raw data. So here we have 25 observations. These could represent the responses to a particular question in a questionnaire, for example. And we want to group them into a frequency distribution so we can get an idea of the basic pattern of the data, what it's basically telling us. Now to do this, of course, we first of all have to find the range of the data, the, the maximum and minimum values. Now, with so few values here, 25, it's possible to scan through them and fairly quickly identify the maximum and minimum values. Clearly, if you have a look here, you can see the maximum is 60 and the minimum one is 6. But if you had, of course, 100 or 200 or even more responses, which might be the case, then it's much less, uh, much more difficult to simply scan through. But fortunately, we can use the built-in max and min functions in Excel to find the maximum and minimum values very quickly. So I'm going to use those here. So let me first of all find the minimum value. I'll put that in here. So equals, of course, to begin a function or formula. Min is the function in this case. Open the bracket. Highlight the data that you want to find the minimum value of. The range, it's A1 to E5, of course. You could type that in, but it's much easier just to drag over the data. And we need to close the bracket to complete the function. Press Enter, and we find, of course, the minimum value is indeed 6. Let's now find the maximum value using the max function. And as we can see, it is 60. So we've got a range of values, the difference, of course, between the maximum and minimum values. Let's find the range as the, as the maximum value minus the minimum value. which of course is 54. So we need to encompass values uh, in our intervals. We need intervals which encompass values from at least 6 and up to 60. Now, how many intervals you use here to group the data is entirely arbitrary. There's no hard and fast rule. You'd normally be looking at maybe 5, 6, 7 intervals. The idea is to have intervals which are not so wide that there's too many values in each one and sim similarly not too narrow so that there's too few values in each one. Here I'm going to use um, six intervals and hence of course in order to contain values up to 60 they're going to have to be 10 wide. Six tens mean 60 of course. So let me put the intervals down here. Now we need to have a column for the lower class boundary, the lower limit of the interval, and the upper class boundary upper limit. Now in determining the actual intervals, you have to of course determine or decide whether your data is discrete, that is simply whole numbers, or continuous, where you could have uh, decimal values, fractional values. Now you notice this data here is in fact all whole numbers, but I'm going to assume in fact that these are numbers that have been rounded to the nearest value. I'll assume that the, the data in fact, the variable here, the thing that's being measured is in fact continuous. It could have fractional values. It's just that we've rounded them to avoid that. The reason why we need to decide this, of course, is that determines whether we can have gaps in the intervals. If they're discrete, you can have gaps. You could have, for example, 0 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30, and so on. If, they're con if it's continuous, then you must not have any gaps. So I'm going to assume it's continuous data here. So I'm going to begin by putting in the lowercase boundary of the first interval, 0, and then the upper class boundary, which is 10. So what we're actually saying here is that this contains values from 0 up to 10, up to and including 10. The next interval, therefore, will be values greater than 10 and up to 20. But 
of course in here I can't put greater than 10 I'm going to have to put 10 and then 20. But it's important to remember what we're actually putting into this interval here are any value which is greater than 10 and up to 20. So a value of 10 would of course go into this one here, a value of 11, 12 and so on up to here and of course 20 would go in here as well. So having established the first two values here you can quickly do the rest by simply highlighting them, dragging on the fill box here. Since Excel, since you've told Excel what the uh, gap is between the two it can use that to create the other ones. I only need to go to there of course 60 and then as you can see it's created the intervals that I wanted. 0 and up to 10, greater than 10 up to 20, greater than 20 up to 30 and so on. So now we can determine how many values are in each of these intervals. Again of course given so few values here you could do this manually simply by having a look at the data and counting. For example how many values are between 0 and up to 10? Well if you check I think you'll find there are 1, 2, 3 values, 4 values it looks like here we've got an 8, a 6, a 9 and a 10. But of course again with a much larger number of actual uh, values here it would be very difficult to do this manually or certainly tedious and prone to error. The frequency function does it much more quickly so let's show how to use that. So I'm going to create a column here for the frequencies which we'll call F. Now to use the frequency function this is what we call an array formula in Excel because it's entered into more than one cell uh, uh, simultaneously. Most formula, vast majority of formula in Excel such as the min and the max and so on are entered into a single cell in which case you simply press enter to enter that formula but with a array formula such as frequency which you're going to be array, uh, put into these cells all at the same time you have to enter that with control shift enter otherwise it doesn't work. So the first step is to highlight all the cells in which the formula is going to go, so it's all these of course. Now entering the formula equals, and the formula here is in fact frequency. Now I could continue typing the um, formula and then open the brackets but there is a shortcut that you can use in Excel. Once the Excel has identified the formula that you want correctly. If you press the tab key and as you can see it completes the formula and, or, and puts the brackets ready for you to enter the data range. Uh, in this case frequency actually needs two ranges of data. Firstly the data array which is the actual raw values here that we want to find that we want to group. You then press a comma as you can see there's a comma there and as for the bins array, the bins array are the upper class boundaries. So we need to put highlight those like that. So let's check we've got the correct range. The data array is A1 to E5, that's right. The bins array is B8 to B13, that's correct. Now as I say, don't press enter here. This won't work in this case. You have to press control shift enter. So in other words, hold down the control and shift keys and press enter. And that, as you can see, creates the frequencies all in one go. And as we can see, as we saw before, there are four values in this interval. As a final check that you've it's done correctly, it's worth finding the sum total of this column. It should, of course, be equal to the total number of values that you've got, which is 25. So let me put the sum of this column here. I'll use the sum function. A quick way to put that in is to use the auto sum button up here. So click the auto sum button. As you can see it puts in the sum function. It guesses the range that you want. Normally it guesses correctly as in this case. If it doesn't guess correctly simply highlight the correct range. So it's correct. Let's press enter. And of course we get 25 which 
means of course I'll put that in register remind me it's a total and of course that's correct there were 25 values so that shows you how to use the frequency function in Excel to quickly create a frequency distribution from some raw data.